Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I formally declare open this council meeting of the Colac Shire Council on the 25th of August, 2021. Almighty God, we seek your blessing and guidance in our deliberations on behalf of the people of the Colac Shire. Enable this council's decisions to be those that contribute to the true welfare and betterment of our community. I would like to start this afternoon by acknowledging the traditional custodians and lawmakers of this land, their elders past and present, and welcome any descendants here today. I would like to advise that all council meetings are audio recorded and live streamed, with the exception of confidential matters. This includes the public participation sections of meetings. The live stream recording of this afternoon's meeting will be placed on the website as soon as practical. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic and accordance with directions issued by the Chief Health Officer of Victoria that are currently in place, this meeting is being held by video conference. Can I ask that council staff recall all those present today? Um, uh, there are no, I note that there are no apologies or leaves of absences, of absence. Um, now moving on to question time, the Colac Otway Shire encourages community input and integral to this is the opportunity provided to ask questions at the council meetings. Community members wishing to ask questions of council by video conference were requested to register their intention to do so before 5 p.m. on Monday, the 23rd of August, 2021. No requests were received. I have received questions in writing from Mr. James Judd, Ms. Phoebe, Nagaraka uh, Smith, Mr. Bob Knowles, Mr. Tim Cobb, and Ms. Gilda Liddicart. Each question received will be read out and a response will be provided by the relevant general manager. Responses will also be provided in writing to submit as following the meeting. Okay. Questions received in writing prior to the meeting from Mr. James Judd. Of the Colac Otway Shire Council's forward planning, how many of those these proposals are subject to approval or amendment by future councils before they are introduced when at least one would require a very large government allocation first? Plus the development of any sports fields at the Colac High School site has been quoted by council officers of needing multi-millions of dollars to come from outside sources. Response from General Manager, Development and Community Services. Uh, through you, Mayor, the Colac 2050 Growth Plan is a plan for the future growth of Colac that established 2050 as a time horizon. Growth in Colac will be phased in stages as described in the plan. The Deans Creek Outline Development Plan is the first major residential growth corridor to be planned for in Colac and work has commenced on the project. Council is confident of attracting grant funding to match Council's contribution to the project. Council decisions will be required on this project at various stages, along with other relevant projects, as is the normal process. It is also not unusual that major sporting facilities require significant government funding. Future development of the former Colac High School site for sporting facilities will require such funding. Thank you. Question two. Since businesses in the Colac region have started planning based on the basis the Colac of the 20, Colac uh, 2050 growth plan will be introduced on time, this is multiple full terms of council in the future. Is council yet able to give any definite undertaking it will happen or is this subject to decisions by future councils and or funds being received prior to doing required works to introduce the plan? Response from General Manager, Development and Community Services. Through you, Mayor, again, the Colac 2050 Growth Plan is a strategic framework to guide the future development and population growth of Colac. The plan sets a vision for Colac, identifies where growth should occur and the appropriate planning controls to manage growth. The growth of the town will be dependent on many factors, some the responsibility of council. It is likely that further council and state government resources will be required to support residential growth, along with contributions from land developers. Council has provided funding in its 2021-2022 budget for the Deans Creek Corridor Outline Development Plan to help facilitate residential land development in the short to medium term. 
Thank you. Question three. What certainty exists that the land at the at the old Colac High School site will be in ownership of the Colac at Washire Council prior to the next Victorian state election, or is this subject to amendment if the state government changes at the next election? Because if subject to amendment, the officers claim that because of land to be received at the high school site, so no open space is required to be provided at Council's Bruce Street site is meaningless. Plus, Council has long claimed it could never develop these lands at the high school site without very large amounts of money coming from other sources first. Plus, is Council trying to avoid the obligations it puts on private people to provide land or funds equal to the value of land that should have been provided as the Bruce Street land is owned by the Colacott Washire Council? Or will any who take this land out of Council's ownership be hit with a demand to supply cash before selling the then developed land? Response from General Manager Development and Community Services. Through you, Mayor. The Victorian Government has confirmed in writing its acceptance to sell and donate a total of 4.483 hectares of the former Colac High School site to Council. Council and the Victorian Government are working through the disposal acquisition process, which should be finalised in coming months. A future Victorian Government election will have no bearing on the acquisition of this site. The future development of the site for recreation purposes will be subject to a master planning process which will determine the type and level of infrastructure required along with estimated costs. As stated previously, as per the majority of major infrastructure projects undertaken by Council, it is likely that funding from other levels of government will be required. Whilst the question regarding the Bruce Street land is not clear, Council has no intention of enabling private developers to avoid obligations of any kind when it comes to developing land for residential purposes. Thank you. Question four. As very secu secure security systems are being hacked around the world and details stolen, could the Colac at Washire Council give a definitive guarantee that all communications conducted by email, online and the web can never be hacked and remain confidential communications? Response from General Manager Corporate Services. Uh, through the Mayor, thank you for the question, Mr Judd. Uh, unfortunately, it is not possible for any organisation to give a definitive guarantee that all communications conducted by email, online and the web can never be hacked and remain confidential communications. The reality is that organisations the likes of Microsoft with the most advanced cyber security are being hacked. Colac Otway Shire has implemented extra measures in recent times to provide extra levels of security. This is and will continue to be an ongoing challenge. To reduce the risks associated with hackers, the Colac Otway Shire Council has implemented security controls such as firewalls, password policies, proactive patching of infrastructure, email security, web security, and a 24-7 managed cyber detect and response service, as well as delivering cyber awareness training to all staff. The implementation of additional security controls using two-factor authentication technologies further reduces these risks. Confidential communications are captured into the Council's electronic document record management system as required under the state record legislation, Victorian Public Records Act 1973. Within this system, confidential records have restricted access controls applied. Council is committed to continuously updating and maintaining security of all systems in line with the requirements of the Victorian Data Security Protection Standards. Thank you. Final question from Mr Judd. How much money was paid by the Colac at Washire Council to produce the papers for the EOI for land development and sale in Bruce Street, Colac, when multiple false statements were made on the map to show the location of the land? The school is in the second block west of Bruce Street, not the second block west of Bunnings. Also, the main way to Geelong is on the highway, not via Forest and Apollo Bay. That is a very long way with shocking roads. Response from General Manager Development and Community Services. Uh, through you, Mayor. Council officers followed the procurement policy to engage a marketing agent for the sale of the land. In order to seek best value for money, officers went beyond the minimum requirement of the policy and requested six quotes from suitably qualified firms. Two quotes were received, assessed by the Project Control Group. 
the cost of the information memorandum is a proportion of the overall engagement for the scope of services provided by the marketing agent. The location of Colac Primary School as indicated by the number six on the map is incorrect. This text should have displayed Memorial Square, not Colac Primary School. This error has been rectified. The site location in reference to the arrow pointing to Geelong is to indicate the site's geographic position being west of Geelong, not a preferred route. Thank you. We now move on to questions from Bibi Nagorka from Birigara. Will Council fly the rainbow flag from its service centres on the 17th of May next year for the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, Ida Hobbit Day? Response from General Manager, Corporate Services. The flags, I oh, thank you, and through the Mayor, the flags that are to be flown permanently at its Ray Street Colac offices pursuant to this policy are the Australian national flag and the Aboriginal flag, except in inclement weather. Flags flown in response to Council's governance responsibilities will be flown in accordance with the relevant legislation and protocol guidelines in force at the time. Council policy 18.12, flag protocol policy. In action with the Reconciliation Action Group plan, sorry, an action with the Re Reconciliation Action Group plan is to investigate the addition of a third flagpole to enable Colac Otway Shire to fly the Torres Strait Island flag. To date, there has not been any discussion regarding a fourth flagpole to fly alternative flags for dedicated days. This would need to be reviewed under the current flag protocol policy as adopted by Council. Thank you. A question from Bob Knowles, Apollo Bay Chamber of Commerce. Will Council assist with the erection of a hoarding to spare visitors the ugly sight of the fire devastation in the main street of Apollo Bay? Photos of attractions around the Shire could feature. Response from General Manager, Development and Community Services. Through the Mayor, Council will consider supporting the erection of hoarding as a visual barrier to the vacant blocks in the main street of Apollo Bay. This would normally be undertaken by landowners and the Apollo Bay Chamber of Commerce might consider approaching landowners to support this concept. Whilst the concept, including the photos of attractions of the Shire, has merit, it should be noted that Council does not have a budget for this type of project. Without understanding the potential cost, Council couldn't commit to undertaking this project without further information. Uh, question two, officers allocated to the Joint Affordable Worker Housing Task Force are struggling to fit the work required into their existing schedules. Will Council allocate more appropriate resources to expedite the extraction of meaningful data and help build the case for timely solutions? Response from General Manager, Development and Community Services. Through you, Mayor. Council understands that affordable housing for workers is a significant issue for our community, which led to the de declaration of a key and essential worker housing crisis at the June 2021 Ordinary Council meeting. Council officers are providing support to the Joint Task Force, but noting that officers' capacity to support is limited due to other key tasks of their roles. Council is a partner to the Great South Coast Key Worker Housing Project Stage 2, which has recently commenced. Council has instructed that the Stage 2 project, from a Colac Otway perspective, has a specific focus on housing issues in our coastal areas. Through funding support from the Victorian Government, the project will appoint an Executive Officer to lead and deliver the project, which will provide some resources to addressing our housing challenges. It will be challenging to allocate further resources to the Joint Affordable Worker Housing Task Force at this point in time, considering this year's budget has been adopted and Council has set a requirement for the organisation to find $200,000 of operational savings for the 2021-2022 year. Uh, question three, will Council commit to a six-month moratorium on the sale of the Apollo Bay kindergarten site in order to allow time for the development of a key and essential worker accommodation proposal on the site? Response from General Manager, Development and Community Services. Uh, through you, Mayor, Council has previously resolved in principle to sell the current Apollo Bay kindergarten site and support the relocation of the kindergarten to the Apollo Bay P12 College. The new ki kindergarten development is dependent on the revenue to be received from the sale of the site. 
Officers plan to discuss the potential sale of the site with councillors in the near future. And in this briefing session, we'll include consideration of the Apollo Bay Chamber's request to delay the sale by six months. It should be noted that any sale process will take some t time and that as part of a sale process, Council would advertise its intention to sell the site, seeking feedback from the community. Thank you. Uh, questions now from Tim Cobb, Skeens Creek. Question one. In the quarterly performance report, 1.1.5, it states that a draft community infrastructure plan for Apollo Bay, Marengo, Skeens Creek should go to the September 2021 Council meeting before being released for consultation. According to the Colac Otway Shire website, the draft plan was due for release January to June 2020, so the project is already more than 12 months behind schedule. The final report was due for completion in June 2020. Are Council confident about hitting this new timeline as the lack of CIP continues to stimmy, uh, stymie progress in our communities? Response from General Manager Development and Community Services. Uh, through you, Mayor, the Community Infrastructure Plan has taken significantly longer than planned to complete due to a number of factors including resolution of key traffic management and Crown land issues with other government agencies. Council is now confident that we've got a way forward and uh, these issues have been sufficiently resolved and the consultants are now preparing a draft plan for presentation to Council at its November or potentially December Council meeting. This will enable community engagement on the draft plan over the December, February peak holiday period and maximise community participation in the process. Uh, question two. When Vic Rhodes built a section of rock wall around Tom, uh, Thomas's corner, they designed it so that the proposed Skeens Creek to Wild Dog Trail could be built on top. Has Council been in touch with the Skeens Creek Cumberland River Trail project team, part of the Geelong City deal, uh, regarding the design of the storm drain at Bass Crescent? Uh, and I'll tie it in with um, the next question. Will Council's work at Bass Crescent include allowance for the proposed Skeens Creek to Cumberland River Trail to run alongside the coastal side of the Great Ocean Road? Response from General Manager, Environment and Infrastructure. Uh, through the Mayor, Council's designer for the Bass Crescent outfall project is required to liaise with the Geelong City Deal team to address any considerations arising from the planning for the Skeens Creek to Cumberland River Trail. Uh, question 2.3. Will Council's works include a pedestrian traffic island to allow safe road crossing at the bottom of Bass Crescent as identified in input to the Skeens Creek Community Infrastructure Plan? Response from General Manager Environment and Infrastructure. Through the Mayor, the scope of the Bass Crescent uh, project does not include the pedestrian island. Uh, question 3.1. 3 the major tourism and visitor centres in the Shire are along the Great Ocean Road, particularly in Apollo Bay, where visitor demands for toilet facilities are much greater than elsewhere in the Shire. What was the cost of the small temporary toilet block built in Apollo Bay? Response from General Manager Environment and Infrastructure. Through the Mayor, the temporary facility in Apollo Bay cost $110,730, excluding GST, and this cost included uh, the work to tap into the existing sewerage system. Uh, question 3.2. Why did Council not design a permanent facility? Response from General Manager, Environment and Infrastructure. Through the Mayor, Council did not build a permanent facility at that time for a number of reasons. Firstly, there was little in the way of a tested strategic basis to do so. And secondly, there was no available budget to be able to fund a more expensive permanent facility. It was also thought that the temporary toilet building would be able to be reused once no longer needed in Apollo Bay, and, and this is still the case. Third, we had an urgent operational need with heavy tour bus loads, which were creating a big problem for nearby residents. We needed to urgently respond to that situation, and we did. 
a purpose designed and procured permanent facility would have taken too long to get in place. So we consulted with the Apollo Bay Chamber of Commerce on this urgent and temporary response and really appreciate the support that they gave. Thank you. Uh, question 3.3. Why are similar temporary toilet facilities not being considered for Colac, which has much lower visitor numbers? Response from General Manager Environment and Infrastructure. Through the Mayor, a draft public toilet strategy has been prepared that includes a review of all council-owned public toilet facilities and it provides recommendations regarding future provision. The strategy will guide decisions and priorities for provision of public toilets in Colac. However, the current priority for Colac is the development of a new toilet and changing places facility at Memorial Square, which does receive similar patronage to toilets in coastal areas. Thank you. I'll now move on to a question from uh, Gilda Lidicutt in Birigara. I have come to appreciate that I am far from alone in my despair about the rapid, seemingly ill-considered changing character of the historic township of Birigara. I have met other residents who venture out when the prolonged noise of chainsaws reverberates through the air. Usually it's too late to do anything as we are confronted by the sad vision of yet another tree carcass laying over the ground, awaiting final obliteration by one of those ear-shattering mulches. I believe some of these trees may have considerable heritage value apart from their value as a tree in its own right. Also, it seems that as land comes up for sale in and around the township, it's often developers who acquire it. Thereafter, clearing all or certainly most trees and carving it up into smaller blocks, which in turn bring in more revenue from rates, so this fact may well create some con conflict of interest. I believe the residents of Birigara are entitled to be kept well in the loop and provided the opportunity to contest or appeal any intention to remove trees from our townscape, especially bigger trees that have provided air, cleaning, oxygen, habitat for our wildlife, beauty and shade from increasing climate change. The lane planting of new trees in no way makes up for that which is lost by the willful, nearsighted act of tree removal. I wonder if we could please have greater oversight of what is going on in and around the perimeter of this township before it is too late and we lose a main feature of the charm that attracts both visitors and tourists to this historic town. I would bring to, I would like to bring your attention to Campfires at the Cross by Heather Let Griffin, a wonderful informative account of Buntingdale Aboriginal Mission at Birigara, 1839 to 1851 in which you can read about the rich history of this region and appreciate how more tourism could perhaps be promoted. There are many reasons to retain the natural beauty, character and charm of Birigara, and I am one of the many residents who share similar concerns and requests of you greater oversight of this town as part of the global world community desperately concerned about the loss of habitat and amenity that makes this town an asset into the future. However, if poorly considered changes continue unabated, may well only look back with regret that we did not plan with greater sensitivity and wisdom when we had the chance. I appeal to each and every one of you to please give due attention as you read this uh, letter. Response from General Manager Development and Community Services. Uh, through you, Mayor. Council is aware of the significant interest of the Birigara community in the preservation of the low density vegetated rural character of the town. Following the implementation of a townwide sewerage scheme by Bow and Water eight years ago, Council undertook strategic planning in partnership with the community to develop and implement planning controls to moderate the impacts of new development. Even those, these provisions coming into effect, including permit requirements for the removal of large trees in some areas, New development may result in a change to the streetscapes of the town as further intensification occurs. Council planners have a responsibility to assess applications against these planning provisions. It is anticipated that Council will be reviewing the Birigara Structure Plan and neighbourhood character controls over the next few years subject to budget funding. Uh, thank you. Okay, that uh, concludes uh, questions.
Uh, I note that we have received no uh, petitions or joint letters. I no call for declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? Um, I note that I have a declaration of interest to declare for item 10.5. Uh, the item is community nominees for Maleric, uh, Maleric Quarry Consultative Committee. I have a general uh, conflict due to my long association with people involved in living and also living adjacent to the quarry. Okay, confirmation of minutes. I propose that we move to confirm the minutes from the council meeting held on the 28th of July, 2021. Do I have a mover? Councillor Hart, do I have a seconder? Councillor McCracken, is it to be opposed? No. I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? Uh, the items carried 7 0. Okay. Uh, now we move to item 10.1, draft social housing plan, consideration of submissions. Do councillors have any questions of officers? Councillor Coston. Councillor Coston, you're on mute. I think we have an update to this recommendation. Is that correct? Uh, can I just get clarification? Is that, that's a, uh, is that an alternate motion or an update from an? Or is that meant to be an update, officer recommendation? Because it says alternate motion on my screen. Uh, through you, Mayor, I believe that the um, that this was prepared as an alternative motion for for Councillor uh, Coston at his request from the earlier briefing. Councillor Coston. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I, I thought it was just an officer update, but I'm happy to uh, um, speak to this. The, the update, um, the, the draft social housing policy um, went out to uh, public submission and there was some uh, uh, feedback from... Uh, Councillor Costin, can I just interrupt? Are you moving this motion or have you got questions of officers? Um, if, it's, if it's my motion, I'd like to see a more definitive word other than regular updates, perhaps monthly updates or two monthly updates in point okay. four. So that's a question for the officers, if that's possible. Uh, through the mayor, um, it's certainly, uh, certainly possible. Um, and uh, as as Mr. McNeil flagged, um, this is a, an alternative motion from the council, so um, that that's fine. I guess what we would say is that uh, we would provide regular updates to councillors through quarterly performance reporting. Also, our strategic planning um, update that we provide to councillors through briefing. So, um, I think uh, bi-monthly would be achieved through a range of mechanisms. Councillor Coston, you have a question? Um, I'd be more comfortable with um, monthly updates if uh, they could be achieved to um, councillor briefings. We have declared a housing crisis. So on the basis that it says monthly up uh, updates, I'm happy to move this motion. Thank you. Okay, I'll just, um, are there any other questions from councillors? Okay, Councillor Coston. As the mover, um, is it to be seconded? Uh, Councillor White is the seconder. Is it to be opposed? Okay. Councillor Coston is the mover. Thank you, Mayor. I'd firstly like to thank all the staff involved in uh, the preparation of this um, social housing policy. It's uh, quite a nice looking policy, a good policy. It went out for public submission 
and there wasn't a lot of comment. There were two submitters who made comments. Uh, so on that basis, we can say that it ticked a lot of boxes for the community. Um, one of the submissions talked about uh, some time frames in there to try and introduce some accountability for the policy. Um, and I think that accountability can be uh, uh, put in place by having monthly updates to uh, council briefing section sessions. So um, I recommend that we adopt uh, this motion as is. Thank you. Uh, Councillor White, as a seconder. Thank you, Kate. Um, yeah, just to add to that, I just think it's a really important for um, council to show a leadership role in social housing. And it's a really good example of um, collaborative work with G21 and coming up with such a, a good report. I think it's important to note that um, we need to acknowledge the disadvantage that exists in our community. And this report does that. And it certainly um, focuses our attention around addressing that. So I think um, it's really uh, encouraging for council to have such a plan to progress that work. Uh, thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Potter. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Look, I'll be uh, supporting this. I'm not sure that um, inclusion of, of paragraph five was necessary, but. but this is a very important plan for um, for this shire. Uh, it's the first social housing plan uh, that we've had. And I'd like to thank the officers and councillors and the uh, outside bodies that uh, contributed to the formulation. There's an identified need for 344 additional houses. This is not deliverable by the by the shire, uh, but we do have a uh, an advocacy um, role to the state and federal governments who, who I think have uh, badly let us down in, in this area. Um, the social disadvantage in this shire uh, is a problem um, and with uh, generational unemployment, um, drug issues, domestic violence uh, and um, gambling all contributing in some way or another to uh, creating this issue with uh, lack of social housing availability. Uh, we can't solve it ourselves, but uh, we can contribute to advocacy and strategies and policies uh, that will help address this. I'd like to thank the two uh, submitters um, for their input and, uh, again, um, thank the officers for their work in delivering this very, very important and crucial uh, plan. Thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Okay, if not, councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? Uh, the item is carried 7 0. Uh, councillors, now we move to item 10.2 Council Policy Review 20.1 Environmental Sustainability Policy. Do councillors have any questions of officers? Okay, if there's no questions, uh, councillors, we have a recommendation before us. Do I have a mover? Councillor Hart, do I have a seconder? Councillor Coston, is it to be opposed? No, uh, Councillor Hart is the mover. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, this policy or, or its original version was first adopted in 2012 and it's now come up for review and the recommendation we're voting on is to put it out for public comment. This policy is a statement for both the community and council staff of council's intent uh, regarding sustainability and environmental issues. I think the uh, policy can be best summarised and I, and I um, pay credit to the officers who have been involved in this. If you have a look at page 48, which has a sustainability framework plan, which um, gives you some uh, indication as to what the policy is all about, both for the community and for council staff. And um, I'd encourage people to have a look at that. And if they've got any comments they may wish to make, there's a six week um, consultation period. 
Councillor Coston is the seconder. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank staff for their work on updating this policy. Um, one important update that's there is uh, the definition of environmental sustainability. Um, it's defined as acting in a way that, that ensures future generations can live the same, if not better, a better life than we have now. Um, the overall objectives in the policy include preserving and enhancing the natural environment, conserving natural resources, protecting biodiversity, reducing waste, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and conserving water and other nat uh, natural assets. Um, what can we expect out of this policy? The expected outcomes include um, increased community and staff awareness of all aspects of environmental sustainability. Uh, it embeds environmental sustainability into all council and staff decision making. Um, it will lead to the allocation of resources and training to ensure that we achieve sustainability. And most importantly, that council and staff will make decisions based on intergenerational equity. I'm pleased to second this motion and put this draft policy out for public um, comment. Thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Potter. Thanks, Kate. Um, I'm pleased uh, also to uh, support this um, updated policy. The, the previous policy has served us very well, uh, as Councillor Hart since, uh, said, since uh, 2012. Um, it has really um, grown legs over that time internally and uh, I think helped the Council to achieve um, great status in relation to uh, our environmental uh, aims and uh, projects that we have that we have delivered, um, it's impacted uh, the way uh, our staff look at uh, contracts uh, and tenders, uh, constantly looking for um, better environmental outcomes and um, tenderers that uh, may have uh, good environmental uh, practices. Uh, I strongly encourage the, the community groups and individuals to have a look at this, uh, comment, um, value add uh, and um, put some um, constructive words in if necessary for uh, councillors uh, to con consider in six weeks time or so about, or thereabouts. Um, and again, I'd like to compliment officers for uh, the way they've gone about updating this. It's a good policy and I look forward to uh, what the community has to say. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Uh, no, councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? Uh, the items carried 7 0. Councillors, now we move to item 10.3, the Barwon South West Climate Alliance. Do councillors have any questions of officers? Councillor McCracken, you've raised your hand. Yeah, I'll just flag I've got an alternative um, recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you. But I do have a question as well. If you're happy for me to go. Yep. Um, my question is, um, so I just want to try and get an understanding of the discussions that have been had at an officer level in sort of coming up with... Um, I guess the first draft, I'll call it, of the, the Barwon Southwest Climate Alliance, noting that in the report and also in the additional document that's been supplied on the website, there's already suggestions about how much fees might be, what a governance structure might look like, um, those sorts of arrangements. So I just, I mean, from my point of view, it looks like discussions are fairly established and fairly advanced, but I just wanted to try and get an understanding of, like, you know, how often there's been meetings and, you know, that sort of thing, if that's OK. Um, uh, Tony McGann, are you online or...? Uh, through, through the Mayor, yes, I am. Okay, uh, Mayor, I might ask uh, Dora... Uh, Novak to answer that question. She's uh, 
certainly been more involved in the detail of the work. Thank you, Tony. Um, through the mayor, I just um, the, there is a project control group that's been established for the um, establishment project of um, the Bound Southwest Climate Alliance. So there's been um, a body of work that has been done in terms of um, exploring options, um, looking at all the other existing greenhouse or climate alliances around the uh, state of Victoria. And um, from that, there's been um, some work done around um, recommendations that will be made to the founding members um, to consider options and recommendations from the project control group so that the information is already um, was collated for them to guide those decisions that will be made in terms of structure, governance, membership, um, purpose, um, rules of the alliance. So um, there is um, there has been a number of project control group meetings, um, and that probably has happened about every two months. And there's also the broader working group where every council and every potential agency and member is also represented. So there's the border group that also contributed to those discussions. Council McCracken, you've got a follow up question. Yeah, I, I do. Um, I, I just noticed that um, with with the document that's um, been circulated after the release of the agenda, it's got some points in there about fee structure and it talks about $15,000 for local governments and $10,000 for agencies. Um, do you think that fee structure is likely to change significantly? And the reason I ask that is because I see that last night Geelong City Council have committed in their next budget to allocate $15,000 towards um, the Alliance membership fee. So my question is, do you see that fee structure changing sub substantially beyond that? Not at all. That's probably um, the ceiling of it in terms of, um, you know, potentially that was looked at as an equitable. So every all the members or local government members say, pay the same fee. There are some alternatives that will probably be discussed by the founding members in terms of... Um, smaller councils potentially playing a lesser amount. But um, when we looked at what was um, sustainable in terms of funding um, the operations of the Alliance, uh, those differences were more for smaller councils in the order of a thousand or two thousand dollars less. So between 12 and 15,000, but it, there is no discussion about fees being higher than $15,000 for any member. Uh, I think Councillor Hart, you had your hand up, and then Councillor Coston. Yeah, um, thank you, um, Mayor. Um, I've, I've, I've more or less got two or three questions on this. I might just ask them all if you like. Um, the first question is, what steps has Council taken to pursue the aims of this um, proposed alliance through and in conjunction with the G21 Alliance and the member councils there. The, um, another question relates to section 110 and 111 of the Local Government Act in terms of setting up new groups. But I note that that's not um, the suggestion to support in Councillor McCracken's resolution. So I might just ask Mayor, if we do get to another resolution, I might ask that question then Really, it's not relevant because of the way Councillor McCracken's um, alternative is framed, if that's all right with you. And the other issue or question I've got, um, Colac Otway's had experience with working with some of our neighbouring councils, particularly with the Krangamite Regional Library Corporation. And um, I'd just like clarification as to whether the, the dispute that Council is currently having with those councils or discussion about the final arrangements I think it's relevant in the context of um, partnerships such as these. So I'd just like to ask, has that matter been resolved when potentially today we're considering of other partnerships? So the question is whether that 
um, dispute or issue has, has been resolved to the satisfaction of council? And if so, when did that occur? Okay, I think there's a mix of questions in there. Um, Dora, can you please um, answer the questions relevant to you? And then we might need um, uh, Ian Sir and General Manager of Development and Community Service might be able to address the last part, I think, of uh, Councillor Hart's question. So um, the G21 councils and the G21 um, Alliance has been briefed on the Bow Southwest Climate Alliance, their environmental pillar and the renewable energy working group under that pillar has been involved and very supportive of both the funding application and the establishment project. And they see this broader regional alliance across the 10 local government areas as um, um, the model that they would like to pursue in terms of a regional climate alliance. Um, that is my understanding. Okay, uh, Ian Surin, can you touch on the, the uh, can you um, make comment on the last part of Councillor Hart's question? Uh, yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, thanks for the question, Councillor Hart. Uh, the the four member councils are, are getting close to resolution of the issue. Um, I, I can't say that it's uh, uh, fully finalised, but we're getting very close to a, a resolution that would suit um, all councils. Uh, Councillor Coston, you've got your hand raised. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've got two questions. Um, can I ask if they're about risks? Are there any legal or financial risks associated with becoming a founding member? And the second question is, if we put aside the Bow and South West region and we look at the rest of Victoria and it's covered by climate alliances, uh, all of the all of the rest of Victoria, how many councils have elected not to become members of a climate alliance where they've had the opportunity to be members? I think Tony again, have you got your hand raised? Do you wish to answer that? Uh, thanks uh, through the mayor. Um, so, councillors, in terms of uh, the other the other councils uh, in Victoria, in the various other regions, um, my understanding is that all councils are members of uh, of their regional climate alliance. Um, a number of councils, a, a little over half at last count, uh, in the Bow and South West West region, have uh, decided to. Uh, proceed at this stage, and there's three or four that are, uh, including us, that are still in that decision phase. Um, the, the first question uh, from Councillor Costum was about financial and legal risks um, of entering into this founding member uh, stage. And look, my advice on that would be that in terms of uh, the financial risk of this particular stage, this particular stage, essentially, we're sitting down at a table with other parties to do some planning work. Uh, and so the financial risks of that, um, uh, you know, uh, really don't exist, apart from a little bit of officer time that would be required. Uh, and the legal uh, risks of entering into this founding member stage um, look, uh, are, are quite minimal. Uh, in our view, um, as I say, uh, we're, we're entering into a process of having cooperative discussions with other interested parties. Um, thanks, Tony. I just missed the uh, first part of you, your answer. Um, so in the rest of Victoria, how many councils have elected not to become members of the Climate Alliance? Uh, so through the mess, and sorry if, if I wasn't clear on that, um, in the southwest region, there are still 
councils that are in their decision phase, just the same as we are, but in the rest of the state, every council that has had the opportunity to join one of these alliances has done so. Thanks, Tony. Councillor Potter. Thanks, Kate. I think I know the answer to this, but just uh, for clarity for myself, can I ask if if we don't become a founding member, um, are we still able to join uh, a regional climate alliance uh, once we know what the structure um, is and uh, you know if we agree with, agree with the aims and, and uh, all the rest of it? Through the Mayor, I'm happy to answer that, yes, we don't need to be a founding member to have the opportunity to become a paid member um, once all those um, um, basics are ironed out around governance and structure and membership. Thank you. Councillor Bell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Dora, this one might be for you as well, but um, we've sort of, there have been similar questions, I guess, to date, but I'd just like to know um, that if we don't choose to move forward with the climate, al climate Alliance at this stage, are we able to be equally effective by utilising our current um, procedures and policies in conjunction with existing alliances that we're part of right now? Well, we're not part of any formal alliance that addresses. Um, so, sorry, Dorit. So, just to be specific, there are there are there are other um, alliances um, that we're part of that don't specifically outline um, um, areas where we'd address climate change, but could, I guess, is my point. So, is it possible to um, to utilise those to um, fulfil the um, obligations of, of what this climate change alliance, climate alliance seeks, seeks to address. Through the mayor, um, thanks for that question, Jamie. Um, my understanding is that that would be really difficult because their priorities and um, aims and actions are focused on what the alliance, what those groupings and alliances are about. This gives us an opportunity to. Um, access funding um, to work together on collaborative projects and deliver, um, you know, really regional impact projects um, across the region. So um, the reason um, we embarked on the establishment of an alliance is because that gap was recognised that we didn't have another platform where we could pursue the type of projects that we could um, achieve through um, an alliance like this. So, so G21 is not concerned with climate change at all? Um, look, um, they do have an environment pillar and they do focus on environmental matters, but as such, um, they don't have a climate change focused group that works on these kind of projects in a dedicated way um, is my understanding. And just sorry, Mayor, lastly, is it possible that given that the G21 has a environmental, a specific environmental component within its operation, is it possible that we could strengthen that perhaps to look at some of the um, um, obligations in which the Climate Alliance aims to address? Through you, Mayor, that's a question that would probably need to be posed to G21, but certainly the feedback from um, the G21 Alliance has been that they welcome the formation of the Bound Southwest Climate Alliance that 
um, is dedicated to this um, project and, in, and it's got that local government and government agency focus that allows us to work on projects that are beneficial to local government and their communities. Thanks, Dora. Councillor Coston. Uh, thank you, Mayor. A question for um, Mr. McCann, if I could. Thanks. Um, the recommendation is to become a founding member. Uh, Councillor Potter raised the issue of uh, uh, perhaps not becoming a founding member and, and taking up membership at a later time. Um, um, in preparing the recommendation, have staff considered that possibility and thought about uh, what the benefits and risks might be if we didn't become a founding member but just signed on at a later date? So through the Mayor, um, and thanks for the question, Councillor. Uh, yes, we have, uh, and ab absolutely Council could, uh, at a future time, consider whether it, it wanted to be um, a member of the Climate Alliance without having participated as a founding member. Uh, the benefit of being a founding member is that uh, Council would then have a seat at the table to draw up the rules, to define the aims, and to start to sort of pencil in what some of the activities and priorities of the of the alliance might be. So that that would be an advantage uh, that council could uh, could reap uh, at, at as I said before, quite a small cost just of some officer time. If council uh, then decides in the future to uh, become a member of the alliance. Um, it would then it would ex it would need to accept the rules that the founding members had set up. But it could certainly do that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor White. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a question about representation on the founding um, committee, if that's what it's called. Uh, what level of officer representation would be uh, representing our council and will there be any opportunity in the future for elected council councillors to participate either in the founding um, first phase or in when the second phase, when the alliance is actually formally formed? So through uh, through the mayor, um, I think in that in that first phase, the founding member stage, where essentially the mechanics of the organisation are being developed, uh, what uh, what we'd be proposing there is that um, council would be represented by senior staff, either the CEO or a general manager, but certainly um, some uh, some staff with real detailed environmental knowledge as well. Um, at a future stage, depending on depending on the the rules that the founding members join up or oh, sorry, draw up, uh, look, I'd probably be expecting that there would be uh, representation from elected members, but you know, that depends on uh, on how the founding members set up the organization. Councillor Potter. Thanks, Mayor. Um, just in relation to the structure, um, which is an unknown, um, if we weren't a uh, founding member, but the structure was uh, devised in such a way that allows a member of the alliance to uh, value add uh, or to call into question um, the various aspects of the structure or uh, or other things. Um, at this stage, we can't be ruled out of being able to contribute to the aims uh, or policies of an alliance, even though we're not a founding member. Um, would that be fair to say, Mr. McGinn? Uh, through through the mayor, yeah, that uh, I think that's I think that's fair to say. Um, 
Chancellor. Okay, councillors, if there's um, no more questions, Councillor McCracken, you had an alternate. Is it, uh, is it to be seconded? Well, can I, can I just say before I move it, um, Mayor, that I'd like to make a couple of slight changes yeah. and so that councillors have the opportunity to see that. Um, on point, uh, where is it, point five, um, I just want to make that a bit clearer. I don't think it adds any value by saying uh, which is currently being established. So everything after which is currently being established, just delete that because it's fairly clear what we are referring to. And I'd also like to put in point four. Um, it's got at, almost at the last part there, or in conjunction with G21 Regional Alliance or any other regional grouping we are currently a member of. Which could include Great South Coast or, you know, something like that. But I didn't want to be specific, could it, you know, I just didn't want to include new ones. Okay. Uh, Councillor Potter, do you have a question of Councillor McCracken? I do, Mayor, but I think Councillor Coston had his hand up first, if that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I actually think you did, but anyway, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, Councillor Coston. Sorry, Mayor, I'm not trying to be the Mayor. Thanks, Mayor. I, I'm, I'm not the um, out of line here. I'm not sure how um, a second alternative motion gets considered, but uh, I also have an alternative motion. But we'll deal with this alternate motion first, and if this fails, there'll be an opportunity if, um, for other um, alternate motions. Uh, Councillor Potter, you've got to quit your question uh, now. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, Look, uh, Councillor McCracken, thanks for that inclusion. I, I was interested about uh, where the Great South Coast would fit into this, um, and um, that now allows us to uh, work with them uh, as well as G21 uh, Gold Star Organisation. Just in relation to point six, um, the wording is resolves that any investigation of arrangements other than, than that outlined in point four requires an explicit, explicit resolution of council. I'm not quite sure that what that means. I'm wondering whether um, resolve, resolves that any commitment to arrangements other than that outlined in point four requires an explicit, explicit resolution of council. Whether that you would consider changing the wording to that or whether you can explain a little yeah. bit more about point six. Thanks, Chris. Look, look, I am happy to change it to that. Um, I guess that does make it a bit clearer the intent of it is to make sure that any changes um, would come back to councillors for a for a decision, as opposed to, well, what's happened in Golden Plains is they've, you know, signed up without even it being in front of a council meeting. So I wouldn't want it to go um, and the decision made under delegation. I want it to come in front of councillors for an explicit resolution that um, gives direction that way. So if it makes it clear that um, a commitment's there, well, then I'm happy with that to be included. Thanks, right. Joe. So, Councillor um, McCracken's the mover. Is it to be seconded? Uh, Councillor Bell, is it to be opposed? Uh, Councillor Coston. Okay. Um, Councillor McCracken is the mover. Thank you, Mayor. I guess this, this, this discussion is more about um, how we work on climate change projects rather than when or if. And I guess I'd like to acknowledge the work that's already been done in the past to get us to a point where we can be the first regional shire to be carbon neutral. But it's my view that we should not be a founding member of the Bow and Southwest, Clients, Southwest Climate Alliance. Um, firstly, it appears as though a structure has already been put in place that's reasonably well established. So I question what influence us as a group of councillors might have when there seems to be a number of um, discussions already had at an officer level, which, you know, we've already seen a, a 
fee structure. We've already seen a governance structure. I don't envisage those things changing too much. And we got confirmation that perhaps the fee structure may not change too significantly, maybe slightly. Um, one of my big concerns is that we're contributing to the creation of an umbrella bureaucracy. Um, there's no elective representatives on this and there's no accountability to the community. So that's a great concern. Um, and by signing on as a foundation member, we sort of give our intent that we're interested in becoming a permanent financial member, which um, I think we need to wait and see what the structure is before we make that commitment. Um, the Climate Alliance, as proposed, has an executive officer, and this was distributed in the papers prior after the um, distribution of the agenda, which basically has an executive officer working three to four days a week um, plus additional costs. Um, basically, if everyone else signs on, we get about one fifteenth of that three to four days a week, which to me doesn't seem like a very good use of resources. Um, the proposed membership, which we've been told isn't likely to change too much, is around about $15,000 for agencies, uh, for councils and $10,000 for agencies. Um, it doesn't really take into account some of the difficulties that we have of a rural shire with not with quite a significant part of our land not rateable. And most of the benefit out of this alliance is going to go to larger centres like Warrnambool or Geelong, and they've got a much greater capacity to raise funds. And $15,000 to them is um, not what $15,000 is us. We can do a lot more with that. Um, I also note that the fee arrangements seem to be fairly well set with Geelong committing to... $15,000 in their budget last night and Karangamite asking Delp to pay their share. So it seems as though those arrangements are, are pretty well set. Um, there doesn't appear for me to be too many um, points of evidence of the benefits of this. Um, we've already done a lot in, the, in this space, in, including renewable energy that's 100%. Um, we purchased that and you know, we didn't need help to get street light projects done either. We've already done a lot of those things. We can tick those boxes already. Um, one of the benefits that is spoken about in this is about providing leadership. But I actually disagree with that fundamentally because we're all looking at everyone else around the state about, oh, well, you know, they've followed in, um, you know, they want to be part of this alliance. We should follow them. Well, that's not leadership to me. That's actually following. Um, we need to be able to, to demonstrate leadership on our own terms. And I think we've done that um, in our own way by being carbon neutral, the first one. So I don't think necessarily that showing leadership is being part of this particular organisation. Um, my suggestion is that we work with G21 and we've already got a good solid base to do that. We're already a financial member. Um, G21 are recognised nationally as BEC best practice regional forum. Um, they already have an environmental pillar which we can pursue these and raise these matters. And we've already shown that we can work with G21 because we've just passed a point um, in recommendation uh, one tonight about um, the social housing policy. So there's no reason why we can't do something in that space with environment as well. And I guess why do we need to reinvent the wheel um, when we've already got a, a perfectly functioning body that can service our needs and at no extra cost to the ratepayer. Um, I do still have some questions about the Local Government Act and Section 110 and 111, um, particularly when there's discussion in the documents about meeting with Hive Legal to set up a corporation, setting up ABNs, bank accounts, becoming incorporated. I think um, we don't have any legal um, sort of written confirmation that it's not a um, applicable in section 1110 and 111. So um, if that is the case, there needs to be significant risk preparation work, which my understanding is it hasn't been done. Um, but I guess in summary, sort of my motion doesn't preclude us from being a full financial member in the future. Um, and I guess giving, it might give us a bit of extra time to do that work once we see what the final structure might be. Um, I guess for me, this really, it, it's sort of about showing leadership in a way is that we don't have to follow everyone else to show climate leadership. We've already shown that in our own communities, in our own way. It doesn't mean that we just sign on and pretty much just uplift our responsibilities to another body. 
we can do a lot with fifteen thousand dollars we've already shown so i'll be two more seconds um so i really encourage everyone to think carefully about this because we need to show our community practical things that we do on the ground and we have been doing that another bureaucracy another talk fest doesn't really serve our rate pay as well and i encourage all councillors to consider this very carefully and vote for it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bell, you're the seconder. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Joe, for that um, extensive outline of um, your motion. I'd just like to thank Dora and Tony and others who provided some additional detail and clarification around what is a, I guess, a little bit of a um, situation where the water, waters have become a little bit muddy in terms of um, how the next 12 months pan out exactly, at least in my opinion. Um, as Joe's outlined, um, I don't necessarily think that um, we are, we should be comparing ourselves with other areas of the state. Um, of course, with an alliance, there is, an, there is a component of that, but I think we are a very unique shire and we need to be um, adapting our um, environmental and climate change measures accordingly, which we already do, as Joe's pointed out, um, being operationally carbon neutral already, which is a really good achievement. We have some really strong environmental programs that currently exist within our Shire and also um, programs that, that um, specifically address climate change. Um, I know we talk about the, fi the financial obligation of around twelve to $15,000 as being a relatively small amount. And I guess to some extent it is, but this is not the first time where I've heard that example being mentioned. And, and these numbers add up pretty quickly over the course of a four year term or even in, in one year, which um, we then have to be, a, be able to um, justify to the rate payer as well. So as Joe said, and what the other effectively what the other motions have done is that they don't rule us in or out of our um, future involvement in, in the Alliance. Um, and I'm happy to explore uh, those opportunities when and if they come, absolutely. But at the moment, um, I'm not convinced um, that that is the best way forward. So I'm, I'm happy to support Joe's motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Coston, you oppose. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think this is a fantastic opportunity to uh, get in on the ground floor and make the Alliance work for us. Um, if we can get in early, get a seat at the table, um, we can uh, make sure the Alliance forms in such a way that uh, will mitigate most of uh, Councillor McCracken's concerns about representation of uh, elected representatives, et cetera, et cetera. He mentioned that he doesn't see the benefits in an alliance. Well, the Central Greenhouse Alliance um, was established in two year 2000, it's 20 years old. It's delivered over $60 million worth of projects for its region just in the last seven years. The Eastern Greenhouse Alliance was established only four years ago, and it's already delivered a, a five times return from the council investment um, into the alliance. So it's a great opportunity to get in on the ground floor. Um, and we need to be showing some leadership here. In terms of our carbon neutrality claims, look, I've, I've come into council late, but I look at this and, and I've had a lot of experience in taking organisations to carbon neutrality. Um, this uh, not becoming a founding member would just make a mockery of our carbon neutrality claims. Um, all we've really done to claim that we're carbon neutral is by green energy and by carbon offsets. And we've done that with ratepayer money. We need to be looking for new and innovative ways to reduce our energy use and to be reducing the financial impact on our, on our ratepayers. And the Alliance can help us do that. The, the issue about G21, I mean, G21 is supporting the Alliance. They, they encourage it to develop. And, I, and G21 is, is pretty resource poor also. I can't see that the board of G21, which is made up of five councils, um, um, and four of those councils who have agreed to become Alliance members, I can't see the board 
offering to set up a parallel organization just because Kyle Gottway wants to. I mean, they, just think about it. Um, the board is not going to do that. It, it's struggling with its own resources. There is an organization, a climate change specific organization being established and the board members are supported. In fact, they've said they'll be members. They're not going to help Colac Otway set up a G21 climate um, arrangement there. The, um, the issue of the uh, legal compliance, I think under section 110 and 111 of the Local Government Act looks a uh, little more than a red herring to me um, to try and obstruct the membership of the Alliance. It obviously hasn't deterred any other councillors, any other councillors in the state, any other councils in the state from becoming members of the Alliance. It's a non-issue. The um, look, If we didn't become a founding member, if we didn't um, step up and uh, and want to set up the, and, and take action to set up the Alliance as suits us best, I'd be, I'd be embarrassed. I'd be ashamed to be part of starting down the path that might see us as the only council in the state that chooses not to become a member of a climate alliance. Thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Potter. I'll just note, Councillor Bell, you have already spoken. You only get to speak once. Councillor Potter. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Look, look, I'll be supporting this. I was uh, grateful for Councillor McCracken making a couple of changes uh, to uh, to allow us to continue to work with uh, other um, organisations such as uh, Great South Coast. Um, this, this motion does not preclude us from ever joining um, a regional climate alliance. Um, what it's saying is we've done a lot of good work there's other organisations that uh, we can work with in the meantime and don't rush into the unknown. We don't know what the rules are going to be. We don't know what the structure is going to be. Um, in the meantime, uh, let's keep doing what we've been doing and continue to look for other opportunities. Um, I, would, I look forward to be able to uh, consider joining um, Regional Climate Alliance once I know what it is and what it means and what the implications are. In the, in the meantime, I'm proud of what this Shire has done in collaboration with um, uh, government bodies and the like to uh, reach the carbon neutrality. I, I don't have the cynicism around um, our carbon neutrality uh, that Councillor Coston has um, um, exposed uh, Tonight I was a bit surprised and uh, I compliment Councillor Hart for his work he's done in relation to the extensive solar panels we've installed, uh, LED street lighting, uh, our switch to hybrid vehicles. There's a whole myriad of things that we've done a, a bit more than buy some green uh, power and uh, um, plant a few trees. So um, I'm proud of the work that the organisation has done. Uh, let's continue it. Let's see what the structure of this climate alliance is and then sensibly consider joining it in due course. Just because others say uh, you have to, we don't have to. Just because people say, oh, everyone else is, we will. Well, we don't have to do that yet. Let's take a cautious, measured, sensible approach to um, climate alliance and um, in the meantime, continue our good work in uh, climate adaptation and uh, mitigation strategies. Uh, Councillor White. Thank you, Kate. Um, I, I just want to say that I think what Councillor McCracken and Councillor Potter and Councillor Bell are talking about is their, their um, misgivings about joining and all the reasons why we shouldn't join and to, to sit back and wait and, and then have the opportunity later. I think the very reason why we should join is because of the very things that they're raising. We should be at the table. We should be there representing our community, influencing the development of the model, having our input into how it should look and what shape it should take and, and, and represent our community and do that in, in the best way we can. I think 
declining this opportunity to not be at the table and to uh, almost say, well, we're going to go it alone. We're an isolationist council. We don't want to participate. We're going to sit back and wait, see what you come up with. And then we might join. I, I don't think is the leadership that we should be showing. I think, um, you know, we all know climate action is a priority. Uh, the Local Government Act is telling us to act and to use whatever mechanisms we can. I think this mechanism is going to be something worth participating in and, and having an opportunity to shape and develop. It aligns, participating aligns with our council plan. It talks about partnerships. We've got to take every partnership we can get. We know partnerships work. Um, and we've got to lead by example. We've got to show the community, we've got to show our council that this that climate, climate action really is important. And I think if we don't become a founding member and take our opportunity to shape and develop the model, I think we're uh, not doing our community, I think we're doing our community a disservice if we don't participate. At least if we participate, we have that opportunity. And at the end of that 12 months, we can say, well, you know, we, we had the input, we, we tried to influence and shape and develop the model, but it's actually not gonna meet our needs. But we can't, if we don't, if we're not at the table, we can't do that. Uh, there's an urgency, and that's that's reflected in in the current IPCC report. And we do need to take every opportunity to um, get the results that we need. Uh, we have had fantastic results. We need to build on that, and I think to build on that, we need to have partnerships and work in collaboration with the rest of our community. I think going out and and on our own and being isolationist is not the way to go. I think G21, um, the, the count, member councils of G21 have voted and quite clearly by voting to participate as founding members are saying we support this alliance. And I think to suggest that G21 um, can uh, start developing um, a similar model to meet our needs is, is, is not realistic. Um, G21 are supporting supporting the development of this alliance. And certainly we don't want to see duplication and yet other bodies trying to do the same thing. We need to get in there with, and it's not just councils, it, it, Deakin University have signed up, Bar and Water, the catchment authorities, all the key players are at the table and I think we need to be at the table with them. So I think we need collaborative effort and partnership and that brings a strong voice. And if we don't take this opportunity, we, we give up that opportunity. We need to be at the table and we need to participate. We need to influence and then we can make some decisions um, at, the end of the, at the end of the time. So I, I won't be supporting this motion. I'm, I think we should be a founding member. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hart. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, I won't be supporting this resolution either and I'll foreshadow that if this resolution is voted against, I'll be... Uh, moving an alternative resolution. Uh, I would like to thank council officers for all the work they've done with this so far. And as been said before, council has had taken a leadership position on many issues to do with climate change, particularly being the first rural council in Victoria to be carbon neutral across its operations. What other councils um, in Victoria, some of them still talk about possibly achieving that in 2025. I think the key issue here is when you look at Councillor McCracken's resolution, there's not a discussion on whether or not we take climate change seriously. Clearly this council does, and clearly Council McCracken's resolution reinforces that in point one and two. The reason that I'll be voting against this is because I think we should, should be involved in the discussion of becoming a founding member of the group that ex, is, extends to the border. But I think we should also be in, um, considering other options such as through G21. So whilst I support um, much of Councillor McCracken's resolution, I'll be voting against it because of point five. I do share some of his reservations about creating another group. I remember when the waste groups merged, there used to be a waste group that covered the councils, a um, regional waste management group that covered the councils in the G21 region. It was a leader in that particular um, area and when it merged with the group and we had a group going to the border um, it, it set the process back years you you built another group from the ground up so much time and money was spent in creating a new group you had so many people sitting around the table in some of those waste forums uh, mayor and I know you used to attend some of those 
honestly, by the time you all introduced yourself, it was almost time to go home. So I do have reservations about having uh, such a large group. And this is why I think it's very important to consider G21 at the same time. But at the same time, the reason we have to, we should be in the discussion about being a founding member is um, there is a risk that uh, we'll be presented with this in some future time and told we'll take it or leave it. So I think we need to explore uh, both options. Just on this about G21 already rejecting this, it's simply not the case. There's never been a discussion, uh, a, a discussion to my knowledge at the board level about having some sort of alliance auspiced by G21. Some of the greenhouse alliances across the state are in fact auspiced rather than being separate incorporated associations as the suggestion is for this one. The only time this has come up in the environment pillar, to my knowledge, is the discussion was, oh, yes, but there's something going on at um, Warnable, which turns out to be this. And yes, it was briefed to um, the environment pillar. But um, it was presented in the sense of we would have an option to look at that. And now we're being told, well, no, um, this is what's on the table and we can't have a discussion with G21. So now, there needs to be a discussion between the G21 region councils as I do have reservations, as I touched on before, and having such a large group. So um, whilst I agree with much of this resolution, I can't support it because it, it doesn't keep us at the table of becoming a founding member of the Bowen South West Regional Alliance. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I'll just add quickly, um, I'll be supporting Councillor McCracken's alternate motion. I've thought long and hard about this one. and. Um, I certainly agree with a lot of the comments that have been made um, here tonight. Um, you know, some, some really good comments. And I think um, while we might not all support this motion, I think basically we're probably on the same page for, of about 80%. Um, I think what's interesting is point one and, um, and point two does make it clear that this council takes um, climate change seriously. Um, we're moving towards, um, we're one of the first rural municipalities to be carbon neutral. And what's what's interesting, we've done that not being part of a climate alliance. And it does make me wonder what all those other alliances are doing that they actually haven't um, they haven't got there yet. And that's probably where I have my greatest concern is that we are creating another layer of bureaucracy, but not actually getting down to the fundamentals, which is trying to um, reduce your carbon footprint. And that does take up um, resources. Like, it might be a proposed that we pay a fifteen thousand dollar a year fee to be a part of this alliance, but it will take up uh, significantly more uh, resources in officer time and energy. And I think, so far for me, it, it um, hasn't been. I certainly haven't been sold that joining a climate alliance is going to put us in a better position from where we are today. So I, um, I will support. Councillor McCracken's um, alternate motion tonight. It doesn't, as Councillor Potter said, it doesn't preclude us from um, ever joining an alliance if that's what we feel we need in the future. But in this point in time, um, I think um, I would prefer to sit on the sidelines and not actually be um, part of the Climate Alliance at this point. Councillor McCracken, do you have a right of reply? Thank you, Mayor. I'm one of the questions I'd raise is that if we did join this group, what ones would we leave as a result? Um, I, I can't remember who said before, but if they said that they don't want to see duplication. Well, I guess if we did join this group, we would see duplication because we're already a member of G21 and the environment pillar, and this just doubles up. So why don't we actually use what we've got? I, I see in one of the officer um, reports that was sent out after the agenda that um, there is a, a, a program called Lighting the Regions. Um, and one of the benefits that's, that's there is that it's delivered savings to 45% of councils. Now, to me, if I was in an alliance, I'd want 100% of some sort of savings delivered to councils, not 45%. So I question whether the outcomes of these alliances are fair and equal particularly when Colac Otway has already achieved so much in the time that we've been working on environmental issues. Um, there's another point that was made about um, 
you know, being at the, the table at G21 and them not being so interested in having a climate um, focus in the environment pillar or words similar to that, I wonder what it would be like to sit around a table with 15 people then and try and be a voice in that as opposed to a table of five. So if there's no hope of getting anything in G21, well, geez, we haven't got much of a hope around this table of 15, which includes a lot of um, government agencies that aren't accountable to the people. Um, one of the last points I'll make is that um, there has been concern about um, sort of uh, how, how some councils sort of operate within this and particularly, you know, um, lead councils and how they, they manage and deal with each other. So I think there's definitely concerns that does cause uh, a legitimate reason to sort of step back and just say, OK, let's see how this turns out and if we want to be a member, well, we certainly can make that decision in the future if it suits us and if it doesn't, well, so be it. But that's a, de that's a decision and a consideration for in the future. Um, I just think what we're doing is the right decision by our ratepayers. It's the right decision because it doesn't create more, more bureaucracy and waste and it makes sure that we actually focus on our outcomes locally, not just abrogating our responsibility to a regional group which doesn't have any accountability to locals. Thank you. Councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? All those against? Uh, the items carried 4-3. Could we have a division, please, Mayor? Divisions called. All those in favour? Councillor McCracken, Councillor Bell, Councillor Potter, uh, Councillor Hanson. All those against? Uh, Councillor Hart, Councillor White, Councillor Coston. Can we have a quick break, please, Mayor? Oh. Uh, yes, yes, no worries. You can have a <clears throat> five minute break. Yeah, all right, we'll come back at 5.37. We'll make it 5, uh, 5.40.
Okay, councillors, uh, we might resume. If we get to. Okay, now we move to item 10.4 Memorial Square Public Toilet Redevelopment Concept Plans for Public Consultation. Just bring it up on the screen. Okay, do councillors have any questions of officers? Councillor Potter. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I'm just interested in um, potential funding streams to try and deliver this project and uh, wondering if officers have an idea of uh, um, where we might go with that. Uh, through the Mayor, I can take that question. Thank you, Councillor Potter. Uh, so we believe there's a number of opportunities for funding for this facility. Um, in particular, the accessible aspects of it and the changing places facility component um, are definitely eligible for the current funding, state government funding that's just been announced. Um, unfortunately, those components are just a small um, percentage of the overall build cost. Um, so we would also need to look for supplementary funding from another source um, for the majority of the building cost. Um, we are going to be considering the next round of the local government, um, sorry, the local infrastructure funding through the federal government, um, which it would be eligible for. So it is foreseeable that through a number of sources of funding, this development could um, attract almost um, entirely external funding to be delivered. Thank you, Maddie. Are there any other questions? No, uh, councillors, we have a recommendation before us. Do I have a mover? Councillor Potter, do I have a seconder? Councillor White, is it to be opposed? Yeah, Councillor Potter is the mover. Thanks, Mayor. I'll I'll be brief. brief. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the officers um, for their work on this and and also for listening to councillors in relation to concerns about the, um, the size of the budget required for this uh, project and, uh, and visiting other options um, and putting them before us. So I appreciate that work. Um, look, our toilets are pretty tired and uh, and sometimes uh, when you bump into people they get to described as disgusting um, they, they also need um, to cater for people from um, all walks of life and uh, to incorporate a changing places uh, facility within a new set of toilets is 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 great um, and it's badly needed and I think there was a letter in today's uh, Kylo Herald uh, which we reflected the need in the community to have those facilities made available to them. So um, I hope uh, officers um, can look for uh, the right funding. I encourage the community to uh, have a look at uh, the designs and what is proposed. It's a lot of money, no doubt about it. Is it needed? Well, yeah, it is. Um, and... I'm interested in uh, the comments and, uh, again, thank the officers for their work. Councillor White, as a seconder. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Just to endorse what uh, Councillor Potter has said, really, um, I think they're part, well past the use-by date and, um, you know, as we all know, toilets are one of the most visited uh, parts of any community and um, I think it's really important in such a prominent location that we have a much more fit for purpose facility for our visitors and for our local community and particularly to um, include um, the accessibility for all, all people including people who have got disabilities. So um, just to endorse what Council Potter says and really um, also really pleased with the information that's been provided by um, the council officers. Thanks a lot for doing that. It was a lot of digging around to get and answer those questions, but it really assisted in informing the decision. So thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Uh, 
Okay, councillors, we have a recommendation. Um, oh, we've got to move out. Councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? Okay, the items carried 7-0. Uh, councillors, we now move on to item 10.5, in which um, I have a, a conflict of interest um, uh, on the item community nominees for Malaria Quarry Consultative Committee. Um, I have a, a general conflict of interest due to my long association with people involved and living adjacent or near the quarry. So I'll now um, hand the reins over to Councillor Coston and step out of the room. Takes a minute. Take your mood mm -hmm. off, Graham. Thank you, everyone. Um, do any councillors have a question of officers? Councillor Hart. Yes, yeah, uh, thank you, Acting Mayor. Um, I believe that we are. I just, I can just see, I think the screen just changed a couple of seconds ago. I just ask if we could have some clarification from the officers through you, um, Acting Mayor that um, the name has changed and what what the circumstances are for this changed recommendation. Yeah, through you, Mayor, uh, Acting Mayor. Uh, just, uh, we had two, uh, two, two nominations for this committee from the community, uh, Daryl Collins and Tim Holt. Um, they were both equally qualified um, to be representatives on, the, on this committee. And so the officers had, um, had initially recommended Daryl Collins as the primary representative with Tim Holt to be a proxy when other members, community members couldn't attend meetings. But since the recommendation was made public in the agenda, uh, Mr Collins contacted officers and indicated that he actually thinks Tim Holt would be the preferred member from his perspective um, to be on the committee and that he'd be prepared to take a back seat and accept that Tim Holt be the, the primary nominee. So on the basis of that um, contact from Mr Collins, we've amended the recommendation from officers to be that Tim Holt be the primary member of the committee and reversed the order of those two. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions of council officers? No, uh, councillors, we have a revised recommendation before us. Um, do I have a mover? Councillor Hart? A seconder? Councillor Potter? Is it to be opposed? No. Um, Councillor Hart, do you wish to speak? Yeah, th thank, thank you, Chair. Um, just briefly, um, I'd like to thank um, both Mr Collins and Mr Holt for nominating to be on this particular um, consultative committee, which is to, to do with the relationships really of, um, of, of the quarry operation with the local community. Um, really appreciate the contact from Mr Collins, I believe he contacted council um, who when he became aware that Mr Holt was also um, had nominated that he was more than happy that Mr. Holt was the um, representative. At the same time, Mr. Collins is prepared to be the reserve representative, if you if you like. So um, good to see uh, this resolved. And uh, my thanks to the two gentlemen for putting their nomination, putting their names forward. Thank you, Councillor Potter. Uh, thanks, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I just want to. Uh echo what uh, Councillor Hart said, and uh, Mr Holt is uh, eminently qualified to uh, be on this um, committee, and um, Mr Collins, uh, likewise, a uh, very community-minded person who um, maintains his um, enthusiasm to represent the community, but uh, doffed his hat to the qualifications held by Mr Holt, and uh, 
um, said, no, I'll be the backup. Um, Mr Holt uh, is more qualified for me. So uh, thanks to both uh, parties and uh, look forward to uh, constructive uh, meetings of this committee. Thank you, Councillor Potter. Does um, any other councillor wish to speak? No. Um, councillors, I've now called for a vote on the revised motion. All those in favour? Motion is passed 7 0. Thank you. Um, can zero. We... Sorry, six, Councillor. It's 6 0. I think you may it have. Is, seven. It is 6 0. Yes, you're quite right. <laughs> um, can we now call go? Um, our Mayor back into the chamber. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Coston. Okay, now we move to item 10.6, Special Delegation Urgent Works Bass Crescent Stormwater Renewal Contract uh, 2001. Do councillors have any questions of officers? Councillor Hart. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Mayor. Sorry, you've moved on my screen. I lost you for a second. Um, my question through you, Mayor, is will a report be provided to the CEO hi highlighting all pertinent uh, points in relation to this uh, matter before she makes a decision on the contract, similar to what we might have received as councillors? And um, will that report be disclosed in an open council meeting so both councillors and the community can see it. And I'd also like a comment through you, Mayor. Um, are we going to expect that this is a habit or is this is an extremely rare occurrence that we're making this sort of advanced delegation to possibly exceed the delegation limits by the CEO? So through uh, Mayor, I'm happy to take that uh, that question. Um, so in terms of uh, a report to the CEO, uh, yes, there'll certainly be a, a detailed report um, to the CEO. Otherwise, uh, she she wouldn't be able to, um, you know, consider the issues and uh, and decide on the on the um, procurement process. Um, there'll also be a report made to council, uh, but some of the information that would have been given to the CEO um, will be uh, attached as confidential attachments to the report that goes to council. And that's standard practice uh, like we do with other, uh, with other contract uh, decisions. Um, and in relation to the second uh, question in terms of becoming a habit. No, look, I, I don't think so. Uh, in the four years uh, that I've been in this position, this is this is the first time that we've uh, recommended to council such an action, and the reason for that is that we've got um, we've got some expert opinion on the level of risk with the deteriorating conditions out there, and and in fact the risk to life is at moderate level, which is far too high for me to be comfortable with. Uh, Councillor Coston. Uh, thank you, Mayor. We had a question at the start of the meeting about um, uh, these works in relation to the uh, Skins Creek to Cumberland River Trail Project team. Um, it seems uh, a good question um, that we could make sure we make allowance for that uh, that work in the works we're doing at the moment. It certainly seems to be more efficient to do that. Um, and in your response, uh, Mr McCann, you said uh, our design is required to relays with the Geelong City Deal team. Um, I'm just wondering, have they liaised yet? And uh, if so, what's the outcome of that? that um, decision um, and do you think it's possible that some money could come from the city deal team to um, 
make sure that culvert's extended such that a trail could go along the side of the Great Ocean Road. So through through the mayor, Maddie uh, Bissett's might have some more um, some more detail in terms of the the discussions that have been had between the Geelong City Deal team and also um, our designers. What I would uh, do is refer councillors to the photo on page 82 of the agenda on their iPads. Uh, there's two photos on that page, and if you look at the bottom photo. That, that sort of gives you a pretty uh, good picture of, of where this infrastructure is, but it also gives you a, a pretty good idea of uh, the difficulty, uh, I suppose the level of challenge that, uh, that the City Deal team will have in terms of getting a path along the ocean side of that road. Um, certainly possible, but uh, quite challenging. Uh, Maddie may have um, some more detailed uh, information about what discussions have taken place to date. Thank, thanks, Tony. And uh, through the Mayor, just to add to what Tony said, uh, the designer has been liaising with the City Deal team. Um, I think it's fair to say that our design process and their planning process are not quite aligned at this point and they're very early on in the process. So any sort of design allowance or meaningful design allowance we could make at this time with our project um, is it can't really that be that heavily informed by what they're doing, but it's definitely a consideration and they are talking to each other to make sure it's coordinated. Um, as Tony's pointed out, uh, whatever it takes to get a trail through that location is going to be quite an engineering feat um, and will probably happen independent of our outlet at the end of the day. Thank you, Penny. Councillor Potter. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Mr McGann, I think the consultant provided a chart with uh, a risk mat matrix. Um, just wondering, did we apply our own risk acceptance criteria um, to the situation and did it align, if we did, did it align with uh, that that was presented by the consultant? Uh, through, through the Mayor, no, uh, no we didn't. Uh, the, the consultant's uh, report. Uh, so they're, they're a geotechnical engineer who we we use regularly. Uh, it was quite clear. Well, number one, they've got specific expertise in in an issue like this. Um, specific expertise beyond uh, any of our staff, uh, and it was quite clear in relation to the assessment of risk. No worries. Thank you. Okay, are there any further questions? Okay, if not, councillors, we have a recommendation before us. Do I have a mover? Uh, Councillor Potter, do I have a seconder? Councillor Coston, is it to be opposed? Okay, Councillor Potter is the mover. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Look, um, an unusual uh, recommendation, um, which uh, I'm sure won't be a habit, but necessary under the circumstances. And we've heard from Mr McGann about uh, the uh, the risk to, uh, to life if um, this situation isn't rectified um, as soon as possible. Um, I'm sure... Uh, Due diligence um, will be adhered to uh, while we go through this quick process to get these works uh, commenced. I hope it stays within budget, um, but um, works need to be done and they need to be done ASAP. Councillor Coston as a seconder. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I live just nearby this, uh, this uh, site and uh, yes, the work's uh, urgent um, and getting more urgent by the day. Um, I, um, I'm comfortable with the way the recommendation has been set up that uh, shows that um, we staff will report back to council at a subsequent council meeting detailing the process. So that provides some 
uh, reassurance that the process will be done correctly, um, uh, even though we're not formally approving the tender before uh, the work start. Thank you. Councillor Hart. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, I'll support this particular resolution. They are urgent works, important works that need to be done, but I do do it with some reservation. Um, what this will mean is the way this has been handled, um, that there will be seven sets of eyes, seven councillors that have been elected to scrutinise these sorts of things, contracts, and to represent the community who will not see it until it's already a um, completed task. That's not to reflect on the CEO by, by any means, but council should see that the councillor arm of council is, is part of the risk management in terms of contracts, is not something that should easily be avoided. And the question could reasonably asked is, did this drain go from being on no one's radar to being a problem that has to be addressed urgently in a matter of, of weeks. And clearly the answer to that is no. This has has got worse, I, I accept that, and I'm supporting this resolution again, Mayor, just to be clear. But you, you could reasonably ask the point, why wasn't this done and handled in such a way that it could be brought to council, councillors for the decision under the normal processes without having to be rushed through in this way. So I'll support it today. Yes, they're urgent works, they're important works. Um, I, I, I certainly will um, get very nervous and concerned if we see another one of these on the agenda in the um, near future. And I've got a long memory. Thanks, Mayor. Okay. Uh, does any other councillor wish to speak? No, no councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? Okay, the item's carried 7 0. Councillors, now we move to item 10.7, the quarterly performance report 2020 2021. April to June 2021. Do councillors have any questions of officers? Okay, if there's no questions, oh, Councillor Hart. Sorry, Mayor, I couldn't, couldn't leave you with not having a, at least one question on this. Um, just on 2.3.7, which is on page 122 of the agenda. Do I take it from that point that council is still looking at putting entrance signs uh, on the Colac East entrance, notwithstanding the other sign that appeared some time ago and is still there? Uh, through the mayor, yes, that's correct. Any other questions? Councillors, we have a recommendation before us. Do I have a mover? Councillor McCracken, do I have a seconder? Councillor White, is it to be opposed? No, Councillor McCracken is the mover. Sorry, Mayor, I don't think you were looking then, but I don't wish to speak. Sorry, I was just writing it down who the mover was. OK, that's easy. Councillor White as the seconder. Uh, just briefly, Mayor, just to say that it's a, a very comprehensive report and covers a lot of ground and um, it, it really goes into the detail of the achievements of what the officers are undertaking. I think it's a report that we can use um, and improve over time to really be one of the key mechanisms for accountability. And I think it, uh, it's a good report for us to have a good look at. And uh, I will be supporting this report. 
Does any other councillor wish to speak? Councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? Okay, the items carried 7-0. So, councillors, now we move to item 10.8, Council Policy Draft Capital Project Prioritisation Policy and Draft Capital Funds Allocation Policy. Do councillors have any questions of officers? Councillor Hart. Thanks, Mayor. Um, through you, if these policies adopted, um, how do these work with the council decision-making process. Do councillors still have a role in decisions or are we going to get to the stage where there's just a, you refer the policy, the policy is the answer and um, that's all there is to it. Just trying to understand how that will work with the councillor arm of council. Uh, through the mayor, um, thank you for the question, councillor Hart. These policies, um, do embed within the policy council's role in the approval process and involvement. Um, it very much talks to the whole spectrum of, of delivering a capital works project. Um, and there are, are multiple points along that journey where councillors are involved from business case um, right through to awarding a contract in some instances. Um, in the capital funds allocation policy, it is outlined that um, council will be part of the approvals um, process for certain projects that are a higher risk and um, a certain value in terms of the scope and that they have a level of comfort um, around what projects um, we're investing our money in. Are there any further questions? No. Councillors, we have a recommendation before us. Do I have a mover? Councillor Hart, do I have a seconder? Councillor McCracken, is it to be opposed? No. Okay, Councillor Hart is the mover. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mayor. And um, this, we're moving that these particular draft policies go out for a six week period of comment. I do think um, policies such as these do serve an important purpose in setting priorities of council but we need to also have a human element in that. And I take some comfort from the answer to my questions, because I mean, if ultimately you're going to assess all projects um, on, a, on a formula basis, you'd probably find that um, most things would be done on Colac, a couple of things might be done on Apollo Bay and nothing would be done anywhere else. So um, whilst I, um, support and I think it's important governance, part of governance that we have con um, policies such as these and I encourage the public to have a look at them. Um, I do take some comfort that councillors, the representatives of the people will still have some role in trying to balance uh, a formula approach to um, capital works and priorities. Uh, Councillor McCracken, that's the seconder. No. Does any other councillor wish to speak? No. All right, councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? The items carried 7 0. Uh, councillors, we now move to item 10.9 authorisation of officers under the Planning and Environment Act 1987. I advise the meeting that the CEO has withdrawn this item from the agenda for further review. Okay. So we'll now move on to item 10.10, .10, Audit and Risk Committee Minutes, the 12th of May, 2021. Do councillors have any questions of officers? Councillor Hart. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um... On, on today's agenda, you can see on page 172 and 173 on these audit and minutes from, from May that the audit committee added an extra point. You can see that when you compare the recommend, um, what was adopted compared to the recommendation. 
And the extra point in regarding to item, and I do have a question, to item 7.11 considered by the audit committee was that the audit committee recommends that subject to available funding, council give consideration to include an internal audit on leases and licenses as part of the internal audit plan for 2021-22. So my question, Mayor, noting that that's in the agenda and that those minutes, what steps have council taken to bring this to councillors attention? What steps has council taken to involve councillors in the discussion? And will such an audit be funded and undertaken or not? I'd ask um, uh, for a comment from um, Mr. Lawrence, General Manager of Corporate Services. Um, thank you. Uh, through the Mayor, I'm just wanting to see where uh, Councillor Hart is referring. Is it page 172, Councillor Hart? If you start at 170, uh, through you, Mayor, if you start at 172, you see the recommendation. If you go to page 173, so it's both pages, you see what was adopted. And by comparing what was adopted with, with the recommendation, you see that the audit committee added an extra point. And when you um, go through it to see what the extra point is, it's about an audit on leases and licenses, which led to the questions I asked. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to see where it's mentioned the leases and licenses. And uh, th through it's number you. three. Um, thank you, Councillor Hart. Uh, the the um, alternative motion recommendation um, does refer, does actually state. Uh, recommends that subject to available funding, council give consideration to including an internal audit of leases and licences. So um, my suggestion would be that uh, at our quarterly quarterly review, um, where, where we may identify um, uh, available funding, um, the option could be put to council then whether we do that or they might the funding might be um, referred for some other use but if there's available funding it could be it could be made available for that yep councillor hart yeah thank thank you mayor um keeping in mind that these are minutes from the audit meeting in may 2021 and we adopted a budget towards the end of June 2021, could I please have an answer on what steps council management took to raise with councillors whether or not this particular audit should be funded? Uh, through the Mayor, um, Councillor Hart, I'd have to take that on notice, but, but for, a, for an upfront answer, I'm not sure that any particular action was taken um, other than when the um, the audit plan for the new year was put up was considered um, uh, it was determined by the executive management team and crow uh, when we did that consideration that there was higher priorities for internal audits Are there any other questions? Okay, councillors, we have a recommendation before us. Do I have a mover? Councillor Hart, do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor McCracken, is it to be opposed? No, uh, Councillor Hart is the mover. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um... This won't be the first time I've spoken to an item on the tabling of the audit committee minutes in these open council meetings. I've done it before. Um, I'm very mindful that I can't discuss 
the details of discussions at the audit committee and I don't intend to do that today. However, what I've said in previous council meetings is um, these audit committee minutes, not only are they an important transparency measure for the public, um, if you read where the audit committee has recommended something different to the recommendation, as you can do today on page 172 and 173, you can get a message from the audit committee. So these are resolutions where the audit committee has said something different to um, what was recommended by management. And, and that's open because it's in these open agendas. So we can draw from page 173 that the audit committee recommended that there be an audit subject to funding on leases and licences um, for, for the coming year. And, and that's the extent that I can mention what was discussed because that's in the open agenda today. So then the question obviously becomes, how does the councillors get informed of instances where the audit committee um, has recommended something different? And I'd put it to you, Mayor, that the answer is that when management feels like telling us, they do. Otherwise, we're left to having to compare um, points of difference in audit committee minutes, as, as I've highlighted today. Then we get the discussion that, oh, well, it could be discussed in the uh, quarterly review. These minutes we're dealing with in August were reflect what occurred in May, three months ago. And, and I don't have a problem that it, they have to be confirmed before they're tabled. I don't have a problem with that. But between the audit committee meeting being held in May and a budget being adopted in June, the end of June, there was ample time, ample time to, for this to be brought to councillors attention. Instead, and I, and I don't really expect councillors should need to do this. Um, I know where to look because I happen to be in the, at the meeting in May. Um, the only way you find this out is by doing a start, sort of like comparing two pictures in the minutes. Is that, is that appropriate? Is, is that how you find out things that have been raised by the audit committee? There's some things that are brought to our attention, but others that are not. So um, I think that's something to think about as councillors. I think that senior management should think about it too. Councillor McCracken is the seconder. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Uh, no, councillors, I'll now call for a vote. All those in favour? The items carry 7-0. Uh, now we move to item 10.11, report from Delegate Municipal Association of Victoria, the MAV, State Council meeting held on the 21st of May 2021. Uh, Councillor Hub, this is your report, so um, over to you. Thanks, Mayor. I'm happy to, with your permission, to answer any questions. And, and um, in the absence of that, I'm happy to move the recommendation. Oh, Councillor Potter. Uh, happy to second the recommendation, Mayor. I don't think there's any uh, questions. Oh, C Councillor White, do you have a question? Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I had a, a very quick look at the report and given our earlier discussion, I'm just wondering, Stephen, if you would comment on whether there'd been any... I, I noticed the MAV supported um, the development of the alliances and I wonder whether there was any um, discussion about that in, at, at MAV if you could enlighten us as to any of discussion around that. Yeah, yeah thanks, through, through you, Mayor. Um, I don't recall any discussion on it. What tends to happen 
at the MAV, if I can just clarify, there, there can often be 80 or even 100 resolutions. I mean, you see how our council meetings go with 12. Um, and so that where, the, where there's strong support, and I, my recollection is that resolution probably got strong support, there's really not a lot of discussion to be quite candid. Um, the discussion seems to be more focused on points of difference, which, which I think you can sort of understand when you've got 80 or more resolutions to deal with. Thank you. If there's uh, no, th oh, Councillor McCracken, you have a question? Yeah, sorry, just quickly. I thought it was an interesting one because um, Councillor Hart, um, item 28, which is the one that was put forward by Colac Copway, um, you said it was unanimous, unanimously supported by um, the MAV, um, which is a good outcome. What What's the sort of impact of this from here forward, if if you can help, if that's all right? Yeah, yes, through through you, Mayor. Um, it it becomes part of the um, uh, planning or the documents that um, G sorry not G twenty one MAV operate under. So they will now add their voice to that with a whole lot range of other things. As you can see, there's a whole range of issues they'll discuss. But I mean, we've I think we. I'm not sure if we've raised this at G21 about the weeds, but we certainly have at MAV, so that's something they'll be pursuing. Um, the, uh, among an, a, a long list of other things, I might add Councillor McCracken, but I, th I know that the Mayor and um, the C or the recent CEO have also raised it with parliamentarians. Um, I do wonder if... I'm not sure if we've raised it with G21. Maybe the mayor knows, but I think it'll be worth raising it there as well. But it's good to see there was unanimous support indicates that both um, urban and country shires were united on this particular issue. Thank you. All right, councillors. Um, uh, we've got a mover in Council Hart, seconded Councillor Potter. So um, Councillor Hart. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. I do want to apologise for the fact that I couldn't bring this report on the May 2020 MAV State Council meeting to an earlier council meeting, but I thought it was important that councillors could see the adopted resolutions and um, a couple of councillors have touched on some of those today. And the particular report wasn't available in time for the June or July meeting, hence why I brought this to this meeting. Um, councillors may be interested to know this is the first MAV State Council meeting since October 2019. The 2020 meetings weren't held due to the COVID um, situation. An important thing I take from this recent meeting, May 2021, that um, all the resolutions were able to be considered, whether they were rural or um, metropolitan related. Delegates were able to fine tune any resolutions that needed fine tuning. And I think the council, the MAV worked very well with um, all councils really. Um, and this was an improvement on the October 2019 meeting. You may, councillors uh, who had a report on that may recall, we actually raised some concerns about how some motions weren't considered. So I think this is a reason to be optimistic about rural councils' relationships with the MAV. Um, and as I say, it's a, uh, I felt it was a much improved situation on what occurred in October 2019. Thank you. Councillor uh, Potter is the seconder. I just want to... Um... Thank Councillor Hart for his report. He's a dedicated member and representative of Council at MAB and does a good job in my view. Does any other councillor wish to speak? <laughs> I have my microphone muted, sorry. Councillors, I will now call for a vote. All those in favour? The items carried 7-0.
Uh, councillors, now we move to item 10.12, report of informal meetings of councillors. Please note that this item is to report the informal meetings of councillors and does not require a council decision. Thank you, councillors. That concludes this council meeting of the Colac Otway Shire. I declare this meeting closed. Thanks, Kate. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you.